that. that. We ain't Night Riders. Get that. We ain't Night Riders. Welcome to the Night Riders Squadcast live stream. You are now rolling with the Night Riders. to another exciting episode of the Night Rider Squad cast. Thank you everyone who's joining us live and who may show up later and those of you who may watch the playback. It's going to be a very, very exciting show. So um, yeah, in case you have not noticed, this is going to be a topic concerning whether or not Chicago is indeed the worst city in America. And the reason why I'm having this as a topic of discussion is I have noticed that there's been a disproportionate amount of attention given to Chicago. And it's not to say that Chicago does not have its problems and that, you know, it doesn't deserve you know some of the negative coverage that it's getting. But I noticed it just seems like it's becoming like the poster child for everything wrong with major urban areas when the numbers just don't add up at least according to my research, and as many of you may be aware, I am a Chicago native. So I think I know a little bit about how it is on a very inter intimate and direct level. And this also comes on the heels of my appearance on Mr. Anton Daniels' show. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Yeah, I know you're familiar with Anton Daniels. He's a pretty big uh, YouTuber out here. Yeah. And um, I had the privilege of uh, being on his show. And uh, we had a very, very in-depth conversation because he's one of the major detractors, or as, as I like to say, <clears throat> haters of Chicago. <laughs> he's been giving it the business for at least the past month or so. So I made it a point to call in and, and just kind of give him some pushback. And it's very interesting because some people were saying that I <laughs> watched him on his own show. <laughs> they were saying, people were rocking with me and what I was saying, but then you had the trolls. You know, people were saying I was simping for Chicago, and some people say he he got me. And all. it was good. It wasn't supposed to. It wasn't like it was like a debate. Mm -hmm. uh, we just both made some very good points. He made some very good points as well. So I don't really consider it like a debate, but I, I definitely want to flesh out some of the things that I said and kind of go a little bit deeper. That you know, because I didn't have. You know, I had to respect the show. I didn't want to, because he, I kind of came at the end of the show. Okay. And he did, he was very generous with his time. I think he stayed a, about an extra hour, you know, for me, because I think he had something to do. Because as you know, he's a, you know, pretty busy guy. Oh, yeah. But we jailed pretty, pretty well. You know, we both got 
a lot of respect for each other, you know, and, um, you know, we both from the Midwest and I kind of started out, you know, teasing him about the fact that, you know, there's always, cause he's from Detroit, right? Yeah. And there's always this rivalry between Chicago and Detroit. And I'm telling him that that's where all this vitriol is coming from because he's hating because of the 96 Bulls. <laughs> you don't know, like the fact that, you know, because, you know, Detroit used to beat the Bulls, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, until they got their squad together and, you know, then it was a wrap. And um, I told him that Chicago had better, you know, pizza. We invented house music, <laughs> all of this yeah. stuff. And Detroit be trying to claim certain things. So I said he's just throwing shade because he's been in the shadow of Chicago. <laughs> so those are bars. But anyway, yeah, it was a great discussion. Um, I, it was lighthearted. I wasn't going too hard. It was, you know, late for me when I called them. So I wasn't, you know, 100 percent myself but people were still saying i kind of won in terms of some of my talking points and but i'm gonna bring out some some key things that came up um but yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna maybe make this a thing i'm going to post the actual conversation on the counselor mr g channel because you know i want to be putting some other content on there I, i'm not going to post it over here because you know we're having the discussion about it now but I'm going to maybe see if I can put the entire conversation over there on, the, on my main channel. But anyway, man, um, what's your take on it? You're from the Midwest as well, um, St. Louis. Yeah. yeah, I'm from St. Louis. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's just as bad, bro. It, you know, um, it's, and it's been bad for a real long time. We uh, pretty much are, are pretty much dubbed the murder capital of the world, man, for real. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm, put out some data in St. Louis very high on the list, <laughs> and oh it yeah, doesn't get oh any yeah. of the attention. I mean, yeah. share the love, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm real surprised that Anton uh, didn't uh, do St. Louis, man. I'm I'm real surprised he did Denver. He, I think he did. Uh, I think he did Louisiana. No, he stays with Chicago because, like I said, and I called him out on it. I said he <laughs> has a vendetta against Chicago. He's hating. He he doesn't like the fact that Chicago has outshined Detroit in so many ways. <laughs> he's hating, and that's why he's putting so much emphasis on Chicago when the numbers don't bear it out. Mm. And a lot of the, my detractors, and because the comment section, some of them were going in on me, right? I'm thinking of making a separate video and just addressing all the commenters because they were going in. They were calling me a Chicago simp. They were saying all kinds oh, of them stuff. them was his people. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, his people. But actually, he, it, it, it was subscri subscriber-only chat. Oh, uh, okay. You know, it was a lot. But to be honest... I had a nice representation in there as far as people who are rocking with what I was saying, even though that was his, I was basically in his house. And, um, but I, man, they were kind of going in, <laughs> even though they were all calling me a hypocrite, especially when they found out I was um, outside the country. When they found out I didn't live in Chicago, oh man, now I'm a hypocrite. Uh, I but I'm going to prove that that's all wrong. I'm going to break it down because I didn't get, didn't get a chance to kind of, uh, get down into the nuts and bolts, and that's the reason why I'm having this topic, because I mm. wanted to have the opportunity to really show that what I'm, my position is not hypocritical. Just mm. because I don't live there doesn't mean I don't have a right to defend a place that I'm from, because I have a a more nuanced understanding of it. And if I hear what it basically amounts to stereotypes, mm. I mean, why wouldn't I try to correct that? Yeah. But you yeah. know how Negroes are. They say, oh, once they, they're very binary or very like black and white in their thinking. They're never very good at nuance. So they can't see the fact that how someone would not live in a place, but at the same time feel a need to try to correct certain misrepresentations. Mm -hmm. And I gave a few examples, such as the fact that, let's say I'm overseas, right? Mm -hmm. And I meet a foreigner who's never been to America. And then they have this idea that somehow if they step off the plane, then they're going to get shot. Somebody's going to be on a rooftop sniping them or something like that because they feel America is so dangerous that once they get off the plane, they're going to get shot. Now, if I hear them say that or something like that, I'm going to correct it. I would say, well, no. I mean, there are some nice places in America. There's some safe places. There's dangerous places. But you can still go there as a tourist and have a great time. You know, I mean, you're not going to be in fear. You shouldn't be in fear of your life. Just because you're in America, you know, there are plenty of people that live there and, and are living out their lives and nothing ever happens to them. You just have to be careful on where you go, just like, you know, any other place, really. 
I mean, America might be more dangerous than certain countries, which it is, but that, that's not to say that you can't still go there as a tourist and have a great time. Because I've actually, you know, had people I've done consulting or with, and they've asked me about certain places to go, specifically in Chicago, and I gave them the road map and where to go and what to do and things to see, and they came back and gave me a great report. They said, oh, they had a great time. Mm -hmm. So by me saying, hey, you know, or trying to dispel some of the stereotypes, that doesn't make me a hypocrite just because I don't live in America. No, not at all, man. Right. And so that's what I'm saying. That That's the logic. But some of them Negroes that were calling me a hypocrite, I said, well, wait a minute. How, how does that make me a hypocrite? I would be, a, see, this is how you got to show how to do a, a true comparative analysis. The only way I would be a hypocrite is if I was specifically telling people to stay there and not leave or to, um, you know, go ahead and, and, and instead of traveling or leaving uh, Chicago or America for that matter, that they should just stay there and stick it out. Yeah. I'm not advocating that. I'm saying, hey, if you want to leave, then get the hell out of there. Right. But right. for the people yeah, that too. are there, yeah. But for the people that are there, yeah, if you want to stick it out, more power to you. I chose right. to leave. But that's not to say that, um, you know, for the people who want to leave, I, you know, I, I advocate for that. Yeah. But at the same time, I know the distinction between that and, and putting out stereotypes that are not true about the city that I come from. I mean, I know it very well to know when someone is just kind of putting extras on it. Yeah, yeah. And so that was my... Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. And just like with my example, simply because I don't live in America, that doesn't mean I don't have a right to speak on America or to say something that will dispel a false notion of what America is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but but that's that nuance that people don't get, right? They'll just once they because, like I said, if you go and watch that um, that conversation between me and Anton, you're gonna notice if you're looking at the comments. That's because I was it was kind of back and forth, mm -hmm. and there were people rocking with even some of the people that were rocking with me um, at first. Once mm -hmm. they found out that I was not in America and I had not lived in America, I have been back there since then, but I have not lived in America in about ten years. Um, once they found that out, oh man, no, oh you're a hypocrite, blah, 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 and all this. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> right, what are you talking about? They don't even know what a hypocrite is. A hypocrite is someone. If I was literally telling people not to leave America, right. not to leave Chicago, and and then I up and did it. Like, spell hypocrite, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm told them spell hypocrite. Exactly, spell it. But the point is, that's not that doesn't make someone a hypocrite just because I. I'm not there, but I can still defend it or speak or give pushback when there's a stereotype involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 At time, he'll be the first to tell you to get out the hood. So I guess that makes him a hypocrite, too, I guess. I mean. Well, see, Anton's position is that he feels that he is loyal to his city, which he mm -hmm. makes a good point because, you know, he he. um talked about how he was as he calls it the first you know putting his city at the front of the congregation so to speak mm -hmm. where he's put it on blast and i've seen videos where he's done that he would go in those abandoned buildings and all the talk about all the problems that detroit had and all that and that's that's good um so he's an advocate at least personally for him to stay there and make it better mm -hmm. Yeah, And so I guess one of the things that he was saying, too, against me was, well, I don't have a vested interest in Chicago being better because I left. Mm -hmm. I said, well, no, I still got loved ones there. I still have investments there. I still have an interest in seeing the city improve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I disagree with it. I don't want to live there, not because I don't um, still have some type of um attachment to the city but it just i found a place that works better for me that's more conducive mm -hmm. to how i want to live um mm -hmm. that's all it is you know i said if i was from detroit i would have left there if i was from philly mm -hmm. i would have left there so mm -hmm. just because i left that doesn't mean that you know that's that's just specific to chicago i left yeah. the country i didn't leave chicago to move to a different city in america i left america yeah yeah yeah, that that just that just uh, that's just an exaggeration, and and everything's true. That's the shoot. That's the main reason why I left uh, St. Louis so that I could uh, improve myself. So yeah. you know, and I came a long way since I left St. Uh, St. Louis. I mean, that's my home. You know, my hometown. 
But, you know, I, I just think that I wouldn't have gotten as far as I did if I didn't leave. You know, that's, that's just something that I felt like I had to do. Mm-hmm. So I did it. And I'm on my way out this country now. So I guess I'm a hypocrite, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, people just throw stuff around. They don't know the real definition of words and how it really applies. And so they just want to get a gotcha moment because they know I was, you know, giving <laughs> Anton the business a little bit mm-hmm. as far as just the points I was making. But again, it wasn't necessarily meant to be an, uh, a debate. It was more or less just me giving pushback because I felt he is doing uh, a disproportionate amount of coverage on Chicago and everything that's going on there, while there are other cities. And we're going to get into some data a little bit later showing the numbers just aren't adding up. And we kind of went a little bit back and forth as far as the statistics and all of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to kind of dig a little deeper into that with this show because I didn't get a chance to do it on his show because, you know, again, we you know, I wanted to respect the, his show. He was already kind of pressed for time, but I am going to kind of dig in a little deeper and mm-hmm. show the reason why I take the position that I do. Okay. But from his standpoint, he's just he's using a lot of very uh, inflammatory type language <laughs> saying so people should leave and he, he's just really going real hard. Mm-hmm. So you know what I, I've officially designated Anton, and like I said, I rock with Anton. I like him. I'm on yeah. his Patreon, so it's not personal. So it's not like no beef or nothing. I, I, that yeah, was one he of cool. the things I said. He, he cool. Me and him, you know, <laughs> I rock with him. But I do designate him because you know we're working on the the KRU, right? The Night Riders universe. Yeah, yeah. We have all of these uh, parallel characters, and and the roster is getting bigger. You know, like uh, Obsidian's the Penguin, and right. Cynthia G is. Uh, poison ivy, <laughs> ivy, mm-hmm. and you got all these different characters, right? Right. And, and it's all adding up. But I, I got some other characters to add to the roster. And uh, okay. Anton, <laughs> <laughs> I just added him. He's uh, because of what I heard him say about Chicago and how he literally wants to. Uh, and it, I know it's a lot of what he's saying is hyperbole. He's just kind of you know really um, just using this inflammatory type stuff, but. Mm-hmm. I'm still going to respond to it like that because it's literally like Chicago's like Gotham City and I'm <laughs> the Dark Knight that got to defend it against him and his evil plan mm-hmm. to condemn Chicago. And he's kind of like the, the <laughs> character. You heard of Hugo Strange? Yeah. The, uh, the <laughs> psychiatrist. Yeah, the, the, Gotham the, the, City right. has become your tomb, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> this is him. Let me get the whole clip. Hold on. Arkham City has become your tomb, Wayne. <laughs> so he he's treating, he wants to treat Chicago like Arkham City, right? He wants to wall it off and turn it into an open air prison. And I said, no, I'm pushing back at that. I said, Chicago, I said, no, get hands off, right? <laughs> I'm like the Dark Knight defending Gotham City against uh, uh, the evil genius uh, <laughs> Anton Daniels, a.k.a. He is Hugo Strange in the in the KRU in the Knight Riders universe. He is officially Hugo Strange. Okay, yeah, I can rock with that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just like Courtney Michelle is Harley Quinn, and, and you see how all this stuff just adds up. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got another one. My brother, uh, Black Ram. I gotta reach out to him um, because I, you know, I've been busy. I've been missing the shows, but I'm still on his Patreon. But um, mm-hmm. he's. He's from Chicago as well. He's from the west side. I'm from the south oh, okay. side. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so he's like, and if you know the kind of the um, the history, he he's like Ra's al Ghul, right? <laughs> <laughs> because Black Ram is one of the people who influenced me to go ahead and start making you a YouTube channel, just like kind of okay. how Ra's al Ghul, you know, influenced uh, the Dark Knight, right? Mm-hmm, right. So. Because like I said, years ago, I was just making blogs and writing, and I had never made the transition to start making videos. I would just kind of watch people. And Black Ram was one of the people I would watch back in the day. I think he, you know, back in what, 2014, 15, somewhere like that. So I would watch, you know, guys like that, and I would just kind of, you know, listen to them. And a lot of the things that they were saying kind of resonated, but I never decided to go on and make videos until much later. And then, you know, just with everything that happened, 
with a lot of the, you know, the guys who were out there like KS and Obsidian, you know, and I said that, you know, I have been writing about this same stuff long before people started making videos. Why don't I just start making videos? Hmm. Yeah. And I looked at people like Black Ram and them. I'm like, hey, you know, those guys are out there putting in work. I know I got a lot to say. I got a lot of positive. I used to get a lot of good responses on my writings. I said, I need to just start making videos. And that's when I created my counselor, Mr. G channel. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. But Black Ram was one of those influences, you know, along with Tommy Sword and Mayor, you know, all the guys that were out there putting, you know, putting out content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. for him being from my city and his uh, style is a little similar to mine in certain ways. Um, so that's why I call him Rachel Ghoul or Ram Al Ghoul or whatever. <laughs> Ram Al Ghoul. <laughs> yeah, because he got like 50 names. He's funny. You know, he, he'll give himself all these different names, but I'm going to let him know about that. I'm probably going to reach out to him because at some point I'm probably going to try to do a collab. I've been on his show already. Okay. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to reach out because the reason why I'm bringing him up is because he actually, uh, <laughs> I think, because he wants to leave the country too. And he's, Oh really? Yeah. So he's actually, I believe, right now, I I didn't get a chance to catch his live, but I thought I saw on a playback that he was um, out in Thailand right now. Okay. Yeah. So I think he's just visiting, but he's going to eventually, as far as I know, want he wants to leave the country. But I got this soundbite from him. I, I I took this clip about what he said. What he said about Chicago. Watch this. Chicago, Chicago, that trifling town. Chicago, Chicago. Don't you come around. <laughs> so that's Black Ram. Oh, <laughs> so he going in on Chicago too. But I know there's a part of him that still kind of would agree with me when it comes to not, you know, going in all off into the into the weeds about like using Chicago as his poster child mm. about, um, you know, because I'm sure he has a, a more nuanced understanding of, his, of the city just like I do. As opposed mm -hmm. to Anton, who's an outsider, he may have visited Chicago, but he's never lived there, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, I, I'm probably gonna reach out to Black Ram and see what his take on it is. Or he may want it to just burn as well. <laughs> 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 what he said, because like I said, that's why I said he's like Rachel Ghoul, so I, he could go either way. Mm 